Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here for Design Cuts, and today we are going to be creating a cool design-themed vintage gig poster in Photoshop. Now, we're going to be using some cool elements hand-picked from the latest design bundle called the Essential Textures and Patterns Bundle. Now, this is a great bundle for you guys to check out. It's got over a thousand hand-curated, high-quality textures and patterns that is sure to help you step up your design game. But let's jump right into today's tutorial. The first thing we want to do is fire up Photoshop and go ahead and create a new document. Now I'm going to take this opportunity just to give my file a name. So I'm going to plug in the name Vintage Gig Poster. And for the size and dimensions, let's go ahead and set the width to about 11 inches with a height of 17. Now for the resolution, you can set it to 300 and make sure the background contents here is set to black with an RGB color mode and 8-bit. Then go ahead and hit create. Now once you make your file, you're going to see that there's a single layer here, just a background layer. So let's go ahead and double click on that just to unlock it. And we can just call this black BG. Here we'll enter a name, hit OK, and then press Command G to place this into a group folder. Now all we're going to do here is double click on the layer name for the folder, and we're just going to call this folder solid black BG. Now this is just going to help us so that we actually have a folder and we can turn this layer on and off because we just need something in Photoshop to get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is come over here to the freebies folder for this tutorial. So the first one that we're going to open here is the RSCO Artifact 009 JPEG. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that name real quick and then pop it open in Photoshop. I'm going to hold the shift key and just drag this over into my document. Now I can double click on layer one and paste the name in there. Now what I want to do from here is hold the alt option key and come all the way to the bottom and click on the adjustment layer icon. Now I'm going to select a black and white adjustment layer and then go ahead and check off this box that says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Once you've done that, I'm going to hold the shift key and select the paper texture below, press command G to put it into a group folder, and I'm just going to name this pin light. As you might have guessed, we're going to actually change the blending mode of this layer to pin light as well. And you'll see right away that just gives us a nice contrasty looking paper. So what we want to do now is begin to build up a few more of these papers. So let's go ahead and then select Artifact 2 and bring this one into Photoshop. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to actually press W to get my magic wand, click anywhere in this white area to create a selection around the paper, and then press Command or Control on a PC plus Shift and I on the keyboard to inverse your selection and then press Command and J to duplicate the selection onto a new layer. Now I'm just going to move that to the side and click and drag this over into my document. Now again, I can double click on the layer name and paste that file name right in here, and then hold down the Control key and click on the layer, and when you see this menu, we want to choose Convert to Smart Object. Now that's just going to make this a smart object so that we can resize this layer without any loss in quality. So what I'm doing here is just holding the Shift key and dragging inwards from the top left corner of the bounding box. Now I'm repositioning this so that I can try and fit the entire page into my document. Now I'm going to hold shift and move this up towards the top and just leave a little bit of breathing room around the edges. Now as you can see, it's not quite tall enough, so I'm just going to move my cursor over the bottom of the bounding box here, hold the Alt Option key, and just drag down a little bit. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend stretching out layers like this too much, um, but it's okay in this case because we're actually just going to be using this layer uh, basically as a mask. So I'll show you guys what I mean. I just need to reposition this a little bit, hold the control key, drag that in, and then paste that right there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is come back to our freebie folder, and we're now going to add artifact number eight. All right, so we're just gradually building up some cool paper textures here. All right, and again, I'm just gonna move this to the side, hold the shift key, and drag that over into my document. And let's go ahead and just add that layer name right here. And we're gonna leave the blending mode set to normal for this one. But what we're going to do now is hold the command key and click on the layer thumbnail icon. And you should now see this, the marching ants here, basically indicating a selection around your paper texture. So with that selection still active, click on the artifact eight image and then select your layer mask down here. Now what that's going to do is basically use this as a mask so that it's confined to this same shape. Now what we can do is hold the shift key and select that paper texture below, press command G, double click on the group one text, 
and just call this group folder paper textures. So we've now built up a couple of textures here, but we're going to push it a little bit further. So go ahead and select the pin light group folder that we created before. Press Command J to make a copy of it, and then Command in the right bracket to move it to the top of the layer palette. So Command in the right bracket will move a layer or a group of layers up, and if you use Command in the left bracket, it will move them down. So what we want to do now is change the blending mode from pin light for this layer, and we're going to change it to color burn instead. All right, and then we can also press the number five on the keyboard to reduce the opacity of the group folder to 50%. So just using the numbers on your keypad will basically allow you to control the opacity of a layer or a group folder by increments of 10. Now all I'm going to do is double click to rename this layer and call it color burn 50%. All right, so I'm just giving it very obvious kind of file names here, so that'll make things nice and easy for us to control. Okay, so at this point, what we can do is now come back down here and add another adjustment layer. Choose Hue Saturation, and this time I'm just going to move the middle saturation slider over to about negative 47, so that I can just desaturate this a little bit. Okay, and you should have this Hue Saturation adjustment layer at the top of your layer stack. Come back down, add another adjustment layer, this time a curves adjustment layer, and we're going to click in the middle of the grid here to create a point. Now, as I move this around, you guys will be able to see the input and the output sliders changing a little bit, or you can actually come in and manually input those values. So I'm gonna come in here where it says input, and I'm gonna type in 122, and then for the output, I'm gonna type in 135. Okay, so you should now have something like this. So we're gonna come back down to the adjustment layer icon, and add another hue saturation adjustment layer. And this time, just move the saturation slider all the way to the left, so it's at negative 100, and that's going to completely desaturate the image. Now we're gonna add one more adjustment layer here, so come back down, and this time we will choose exposure because we wanna brighten this up just a touch. So once you've done that, up here you'll see you have three sliders. You have exposure, offset, and gamma correction. Now for the exposure, we're going to move this up so that it's set to about 1.3 or 1.33, somewhere about there. And then let's go ahead and also move the offset slider, or we can manually input a value here. So I'm actually going to type in the value negative 0 0.1404 and press enter, and there you go. So we now have these four adjustment layers. But what I want to do is actually put these into a group folder of their own. So I'm going to make sure that I have the exposure adjustment layer selected. Hold the shift key and select this hue saturation layer. Press command G to put them into a folder. Double click on the group one text to rename the layer. And I'm just going to call this adjustment layers like that. You want to make sure that these are only affecting the paper. I don't want this to be applied to the background at all. So in order to do that, I actually need to get a selection around the paper from earlier. So I can come into my Paper Textures folder, and now hold the Command key and click on the Smart Object thumbnail here. And that's going to activate a selection around the paper. Now I'll come back to my Adjustment Layer group folder and click on the Add Layer Mask icon found at the bottom of the Layers palette, and that's going to apply a layer mask. So now when I turn this on and off, you can see that it's not really affecting the outer bounds of the canvas. So come back over to the Freebie folder, and I'm actually just going to, again, copy the name here, open up this wood walnut image in Photoshop, and now I'm going to click and drag this over into my document. Now this is a little bit smaller than what we need, so I'm actually going to have to scale this up a little bit. I'm going to double click on the layer name and just paste that in real quick, and then go ahead and press Command T to do a free transform. Now what I want to do is rotate this counterclockwise while holding the Shift key until it's right side up, and I'm going to move it to the upper left hand corner, hold the shift key and drag out from the bottom right corner of the bounding box. Now I'm going to slide this over a bit and we basically want this wooden texture to be on the background. So what we need to do next, because we want to hide this kind of lighter part, is create a copy. So I'm going to press command J, hold the shift key and just drag it over until you can no longer see the light part of the wood. And then what we're going to do is come down here and click on the Add Layer Mask icon, press G on the keyboard to get your gradient tool, and make sure that black is your foreground color. If it's not, you can just press D on the keyboard to reset your colors, and then press X to toggle back and forth until you have black set as the foreground color. Press G again to go back to your gradient tool, 
and come up top to this toolbar here and make sure that you have a gradient that fades from black to transparent. And we also want to make sure that it's a linear gradient, which we do have. Now what we want to do is basically get rid of this line here, get rid of that seam. So make sure that you have your layer mask selected over here in your layers palette, and then click and drag from right to left while holding the shift key. And that's basically going to make that seam invisible and cover up the light part of the wood below. So what we want to do now is hold the shift key and select both of these wood layers. Press Command and G to put them into a group folder, and I'm just going to call it Wood Texture. Now again, for this texture, this time, I don't want it to be inside the paper, I only want to see it outside. So I'm going to hold the Command key and click on the mask icon for the layer below, and this time I'm going to press Command Shift I to invert the selection, and then click on the Add Layer Mask icon here. So that's going to make it so that I can only see the wood outside of the paper. So what we're going to do now is apply a couple of adjustment layers to this wood texture folder. So hold the Alt Option key and click on the adjustment layer icon here at the bottom of the layers palette and apply a hue saturation adjustment layer and check off this box that says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Now for this, I'm going to move the saturation all the way to the left to desaturate it and set it to negative 100, but I'm going to reduce the opacity of the hue saturation layer to 80 by just pressing the number 8 on the keyboard. Now select the wood texture folder again, return to the adjustment layer icon, and this time add a levels adjustment layer. Now for this we're going to move the left slider towards the right until it's set to about 110, or you can manually input that value if you'd like. But that's just going to boost the contrast here of our slightly desaturated wood in the background and give us kind of a more high contrast look. So now what I want to do is actually add a fade behind this. So go ahead and create another new layer, press G to get your gradient tool, and then click somewhere off the canvas on the bottom here, and click and drag upwards while holding the shift key. And that's just going to create this nice kind of fade here on the bottom, and then press the number six to reduce the opacity to about 60%. Now the next thing we're going to do is create a shadow for our actual paper. So in order to do this, we need to activate a selection once again. Let's go ahead and hold the command key and click on the layer thumbnail icon for the adjustment layers folder here. And you should now see a selection around your paper. So with that selection active, create a new layer, make sure that black is your foreground color and press alt option and delete on the keyboard. And that's going to fill this paper selection with solid black. Now in order to make it look like a shadow, we're actually going to blur it a little bit. So I'm just going to zoom in here then come up to the filter menu and choose Blur, Gaussian Blur. And let's enter a value of around 33 pixels and then hit OK. All right, now I can zoom out a bit. And I'm actually going to maybe reduce the opacity of this to around 70 by pressing the number seven on the keyboard. Hold the Shift key and tap the down arrow a few times just to make the shadow a little bit lower. Now, what we're going to do from here is hold the Shift key and select both of these layers press G on the keyboard to put them into a group folder, and now I'm just going to rename this layer Paper Shadow. Now, as you might have guessed, we don't want the paper itself to be this dark. We just want it to look like there's a shadow behind it. So in order to do that, we can actually already use our existing selection from the Wood Texture group folder here by holding the Command key, clicking on the Layer Mask thumbnail, and then clicking the Add Layer Mask icon from the bottom of the Layers palette while we have our paper shadow folder active and selected in the layers palette. Okay, so now I can turn that layer on and off, and you guys can see that it creates a little bit of depth there by pushing the background to the background and helping the paper stand out a bit more. So at this point, we've basically set up most of our background, and we can now put all of these layers into a background folder. So select the top paper shadow group folder, hold the shift key, and select the very bottom layer, the solid black BG layer, and then press Command G once again, double click the group one text, and just change this to background. Now, if you haven't done so already, just go ahead and save your file really quick. And this is something you guys should just get in the habit of doing while you work, because the last thing you want to do is have Photoshop crash and then lose all of your work. So just go ahead and do that really quickly, periodically throughout. So now that our background is set up, we can actually focus on beginning the design of our poster itself. So I'm going to come back over here to the freebie folder, and we're going to go ahead and open up some more of these freebies. Now the first one I'm going to use is Color Splash 1 Stroke 1. 
And these are just a few of these really nice looking natural brush strokes from the overall larger bundle from, I believe, you and I graphics. Now, the actual elements that you're getting in that bundle are kind of in the form of complete patterns. And I've just kind of pulled these apart to isolate individual brush strokes for the tutorial because I wanted to have these nice kind of painterly strokes behind some of the text that we're going to be working with and creating. So here's our first one that I've opened up in Adobe Illustrator. I'm just going to select it and then copy it by pressing Command C on the keyboard and then pop back over to Photoshop by pressing Command and the Tab key until you come back over here. And now I'm going to press Command V to paste it. And when you see this dialog box here asking you how you want to paste this or paste as, choose the Smart Object option and then go ahead and hit OK. And once you paste this in, we're going to transform it a little bit just to make it about you know the size and the width that we want. So I'm going to move this up here to the top and then just go ahead and press return to apply the changes. But what we want to do now is actually just rasterize this so that we can stretch it a little bit the way we want to. So I'm going to hold the control key, click on the vector smart object layer, and now choose rasterize layer. Now the reason I'm doing that is because when I press command T, it will now allow me to stretch this horizontally. All right, so I'm just gonna stretch this out a bit here, make it a little bit thinner, and then I'm actually just going to tilt it slightly up kind of towards the right corner to create some contrast there because our paper is kind of angled up into the left, so I want this to go kind of the opposite way to balance things out. And now I can double click this layer and I'm just going to give it the file name here that I've used before. And what I wanna do now is double click on this layer to bring up my layer styles. I'm gonna check off the color overlay option click on the fill color, and then let's go ahead and change the hex value here to 954642, which is this kind of reddish gray color. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is create another new layer on top. So you can either do that by pressing Command, Option, Shift, and N on the keyboard, or just by coming down here and choosing the new layer icon. So from there, what we wanna do is press T on the keyboard to get our type tool. And then I'm just going to click in here and type out the words live from the PS Dome. Press Command A on the keyboard to highlight all of my text. And I need to get my character panel or you can actually change the size of your text up here in the toolbar. So I'm just clicking and dragging to the left to resize that a bit. And for the font, I'm using a typeface here called Long Haired Freaky People. Now this font is not part of the bundle, but it is, however, a free typeface that you guys can download from defont.com. So what we want to do from here is double click on the text layer, check off the color overlay option, and this time we'll change the fill color of this to a lighter color. So let's go ahead and make it C-A-C-A-C-A, -A -A -A, which is going to be this nice kind of light gray. Okay, and I'm just going to tap that over to kind of roughly center it in my paint stroke here. Press the T key on the keyboard and move your cursor between the letters L and I in live. And now hold the Alt Option key and tap the right arrow a few times just to add a bit of space between the letters. We don't want them running right into each other. So just pay attention to the spacing here to try and make it somewhat consistent. So as you can see, the T and the H are a little too close together compared to these other, the spacing of these other letters. So again, move your cursor between them with the arrows and then hold down Alt Option and use the right arrow key to add space or Alt Option and the left arrow to decrease the amount of space. Now, once you've done that and you're happy with the size and the placement of everything, Hold the Shift key and select both of these layers together. Press Command G to put them into a group folder. And I'm just going to call this Live from the PS Dome to make it nice and easy to spot and very obvious for what it is. The next freebie I'm going to open up is Color Splash 2 Stroke 3. Now this is another one of these really nice brush stroke elements that we're going to be using in Adobe Illustrator and then bringing over in Photoshop. So quickly select that. Press Command C, then Command and Tab to come back over to Photoshop. Command V to paste it. And now what I'm going to do is just kind of scale this up. So I'm going to rotate it, hold the Shift key, scale it up a bit like that. Maybe play around with the size and the positioning a bit. Okay. Maybe put that over here. Now what I want to do is duplicate that layer. So I'm going to press Command J to duplicate it. Press Command T to do another free transform, and I'll hold the Control key and click on the shape and choose the flip horizontal option here from the bottom. 
Now what we can do is slide this over, hold the control key and click one more time, and this time choose flip vertical. So that's basically going to flip it both ways just to create a bit of variation there. So it's a good way to kind of cover up the fact that we're using you know, the same strokes so that we get a little bit more out of it. Now I'm going to select both of those layers together and just scale them up a little bit and move it just here below the live from the PS Dome text. Come back over here to Illustrator. I'm going to open up Color Splash 1, Stroke 1. Okay, pop that back open here, which we already have open because we used it before. Press Command C to copy it. Come back over to Photoshop, paste the layer as a smart object. And now we're gonna do the same thing where we just kind of you know, bring this in here, move it around and find a position that looks good. So maybe something like that looks nice and it kind of fills in some of these gaps here, just laid on top of our other two brush strokes. Okay, so what I can do now is select all three of these layers Press Command G to put them into a group folder. Double click, and I'm just going to rename this Brush Strokes. And now what I'm going to do is double click on the group folder itself, check off the color overlay option, and for the fill color, we're actually going to use something a bit brighter. This time I'm going to enter the value CA9400, which is this kind of orangey yellow color. And I'm just gonna scale that up a little bit more, like so. And now add another new layer. Grab your text tool, T on the keyboard, and now we're gonna click and add some more text. I'm actually going to now enter a date. So let's type out Sunday, comma, September 10 at 8 p.m. So we're just gonna enter the time and date here. Now I'm gonna press Command A or just double click or click three times inside of here with your text tool to highlight all of the text. Now for the typeface, Let's go ahead and use another free typeface from defont.com called DK Aventure. All right, now what I wanna do is press Command T to do a free transform. And I'm going to move my cursor over one of the corners here just so I can rotate this a bit. And then I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and scale it down from the center, or scale it down from the corner rather. All right, and I'm just gonna slide this over so that I can loosely try to align it with the left and right edges of the PS Dome text above. Now I'm going to press return or enter to apply the changes and just hold the shift key and tap that down a few times. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this layer, check off the color overlay option, and this time we'll enter a value of 464761, which is this kind of grayish blue color. All right, press command G to put this into a group folder, double click to rename it and we're just going to call it date and now I'm actually just going to reorder these. So I'm gonna click and move the date folder below the live from the PS Dome folder. And then I'll select my brush strokes folder and move that down below the date folder. Okay, so we just kind of keep these things in order. So if, if at any point we need to go back and make changes, it'll be really easy to find the layers in the folders that we need. Create another new layer by pressing Command, Option, Shift, and N on the keyboard. Grab your type tool, click inside of this brush stroke, and type out the letters A-N-T-O-N-E-S. What I'm gonna do here is click three times inside to highlight the text, come up to the top toolbar here and highlight my typeface name, which is currently set to DK Aventure. I'm going to change it to this font called Bromo Regular. Now, this is a really great font. Again, one that you guys can download completely free from defont.com. So once you've typed this out, I'm just Again, playing with the size by either moving this size around up here on the top toolbar or by pressing Command T and dragging inwards or outwards while holding the Shift key to scale it up or down. Now I want to rotate it slightly just so that it matches the angle of our other text. And then when you're happy with the size and placement of the word, press Return. Now press T to get your type tool again. And now let's just go ahead and click in here to modify the spacing a bit. So I'm moving my cursor between the T and the O then I'm gonna hold the Alt Option key and tap the left arrow a few times just to reduce the spacing there. And then move your arrow between the letters A and N and hold Alt Option and tap to the right a few times to add a little bit of space there. Okay, so once you've done that, go ahead and double click on the layer to bring up your layer styles once again. Check off the color overlay option. And we're going to change the color here to the hex value E7, E7, E7 which is a slight, slightly off-white off kind of gray color here. 
And now before we close out of this, we're actually going to check off the stroke option as well. Now for the structure, make sure that you set the size to about 29 pixels, the position to outside, and for the fill color, we're going to use this nice kind of color that we used before, or we can change it up slightly just to make it a little bit darker. So let's use 454762, and then go ahead and hit OK. So you now have this light kind of gray color with a thick kind of purplish blue outline around it. And if you want to, you know, come back here and modify the spacing between the letters a little bit, you can do that. But this is going to look nice having some of these letters joined together in a solid shape. So what we want to do now is actually complete this so it's an actual word by pressing Command J to duplicate the type layer. And now I'm just going to slide it over a little bit, press T and click in here to highlight my text and just type the letter P. So it should now say Pantones. And what we're going to do from here is move it over to the beginning of the word and we're going to hold down Alt, Option, and Shift and drag outwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box. And I'm just going to drag outwards to scale it up a little bit so that the letter P is slightly larger than the rest of the letters. Now, once you've done that, you want to make sure that the P kind of overlaps and cuts into the A a little bit. And then hold the Shift key and select the text layer below. So you should have the P and the Antone selected at the same time. Hold the Control key and convert this to a smart object. Double click the layer and just change it to the word Pantones to complete that. And what I want to do from here is press Command J to make a copy. And then I'm going to use the same shortcut we used earlier to move this layer down once in the stack. So that, if you remember, was Command and left bracket. So at this point, what we're going to do is create an action so that we can kind of fake a 3D extrusion effect. So the actions panel is right here. It kind of looks like a play button. But if you don't see it, you can come up to the window menu and choose Actions. Now that's going to just pop open this new action here. And I've already created this once, so let me just go ahead and create a new one so that I can walk you guys through it. The first thing we're going to do is click on this icon on the bottom here that says Create New Action. And I'll just go ahead and call this one Extrusion 2 and then hit Record. So we're basically now recording the steps that we want to be able to make part of our action. So the first thing we're going to do is press Command J to make a copy, Command and the left bracket to move the layer down, and then we're going to press the down arrow once and the right arrow once as well, so that we're just offsetting it down into the right by one pixel. Now once you've done that, you can come down here and click Stop. That's really all we need to do for our action. So what we can do now is select Extrusion 2 here in our Actions panel, and all we have to do is click Play, and let's make about 10 or 11 copies of this just to create that extrusion effect. So you can see now it actually has a bit of a 3D look to it, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I have my very last copy selected here, hold the Shift key, and select the very first copy just below our original Pantone Smart Object, and then press Command G on the keyboard to put it into a group folder, double click the name, and let's just go ahead and rename it Extrusion. So what I'm going to do from here is hold the Shift key and now select the Pantone Smart Object just above it. Press Command J to duplicate both of those layers and then we can press Command E to merge them together. So move this layer down once, or actually twice, below the Extrusion Group folder and I'll just go ahead and call this Merged Copy. Now I can change the fill to zero. So that's basically going to make it invisible. If I turn those two layers off, you can't see it. But what I can do now is double click on the layer, check off the color overlay option, and we can leave this same fill color here to E7, 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 and go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to tap this up a few times and to the right, select the extrusion group folder, hold Shift and select the Pantone Smart Object, and press Command G to put them into a group folder by themselves. And I'm just going to call this layer Pantones and leave this merged copy kind of off to the side by itself. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment. What I'm going to do now is add another text layer, press T to get my type tool, and then click off to the side here and type out the word the. I'm going to highlight this text, come up here to the top toolbar and highlight the word Bromo, and I'm going to change this to another free font from defont.com called Lovely Quotes Regular. It's a nice kind of script font that we're going to be using just to put before the word Pantones here. So I'm going to double click on this layer now and apply the same layer styles that I was using before for the Pantone's word itself. 
So check off the color overlay box and then the stroke and then hit OK. What I'm going to do now is hold the control key, click on the word the and change it to a smart object. And then we're going to change the blending mode of this layer from normal to multiply. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this Pantones folder. So select the group folder and where it says pass through, we're just going to change that to multiply. Okay, so it's going to look a little bit darker. It might look a little bit weird at first, but there is a reason why we're doing this. So what we want to do now is actually kind of knock this out of the brush stroke. So what I'm going to do now is select the Pantones group folder, press Command J to duplicate it, Command E to merge it together. And now I'm going to hold the Command key and click on the thumbnail, poke out the eye to turn off the visibility, and then hold Command and Shift and click on the layer thumbnail for the word the at the same time. So that we've now got both of these layers selected. And now what I'm going to do is select the brush strokes group folder down here, come up to the select menu and choose inverse to inverse the selection, and then click on the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette. Now it kind of worked with the word the, but for some reason we're not seeing the texture through these letters like we want to. And the reason for that is because we actually need to knock this shape out of the merged copy as well. So I'm holding the command key and clicking on the layer thumbnail for this merged copy here that we've turned off. And now I'm going to select the merged copy below the word the, and I'm going to once again kind of inverse this selection. So come up to the select menu, choose inverse, and now with that layer still selected, click on the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And now once I've done that, we can actually see through the word like we wanted to. Next, let's go ahead and select this Pantone's Copy 12 layer and just delete it, and then create another new layer, Command, Option, Shift, N on the keyboard. Press T on the keyboard to get your type tool. And now I'm going to click, and I'm going to type in quotation marks here, RGB yourself, all right, end quote. And let's go ahead and just change this font up right here, because that one doesn't really look that great for what we want to use it for. Let's go ahead and change this back to our DK Aventure regular font, scale it down a bit to a good size, maybe somewhere around 24, 25 point is fine. And then I'm just going to move this over here, press Command T and rotate it a bit. And now I'll double click on the layer to bring up the layer styles, check off the color overlay option. And I'm just going to use that same fill color E7, 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 and then go ahead and hit OK. And now I just want to kind of tap this over here so it's a little bit closer to our word maybe tucked in between the S and the T here. That looks pretty good. And now the problem is though that we're, our brush strokes are not really you know, providing us, we, we need to make it a little bit taller so that it fills in this space behind the song. So the easy way to do that is to click on this arrow next to the brush strokes folder to reveal the contents. Select the first brush stroke in here, hold the shift key and select the third, and then press command T on the keyboard to do a free transform. Hold the control key, as you drag down to make this shape a little bit taller. Okay, and that's not going to affect any of our masks because we're going directly to these source graphics here to modify that. All right, so then go ahead and click that arrow again to hide it. And we've basically now given enough of a background behind our song to cover everything up. So I'm gonna come back over here to my freebie folder. And the next thing we're gonna do is open up this hand-drawn pattern 59-01, which are these nice dots. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag this into my Photoshop document. All right, so I'm just going to drag that over here. The first thing I want to do is press Command T to do a free transform. And then I'm just going to rotate it a bit and scale it down by dragging inwards while holding the Shift key. And then let's place it somewhere over here on top of our Pantone's text and then press Return or Enter on the keyboard. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer by pressing Command J and press Command T to do a free transform and kind of slide it over here to the right and do that one more time so that we basically end up with three copies spanning across our brush strokes and our text. Now I'm going to select the first one, hold Shift and select the third one, press Command E to merge those together. And I'm just going to play around with the positioning a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is create another copy now of these three merged dots press Command T, and let's just go ahead and kind of move this around a little bit more, just so we can get a few more dots on the bottom here. So feel free to, you know, scale it, rotate it, whatever you want to do, um, just to find some interesting 
lockups and configurations to cover this up. And then when you're happy with it, press return on the keyboard, select both of these layers together and press command G to put them into a group folder. And now double click on the group one text to rename it. And I'm just going to call this hand drawn dot pattern. And then I'm going to double click on the group folder to bring up my layer styles, check off the color overlay box. And now I'm going to change the color here to let's try 393B51 to get kind of a dark purple indigo color that kind of matches the value of our text here, of that color on the extruded text. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is place this folder just above the brush strokes folder so it's behind our type. Now, if, at the moment, it's kind of overlapping and making some weird effects because it's set to a multiply blend mode, but we're going to fix that in just a second. So what I want to do here is basically mask this so that we only see it inside of the brush strokes. So again, I'm going to expand the contents of the brush strokes folder, hold command and shift and select each of these shapes individually until we have the entire shape. And now I'm going to select my hand drawn dot pattern group folder and come down here and click on the add layer mask icon. Now I want to do the same thing that we did before by knocking out the word the and Pantones from this dot pattern. So I'm going to hold the command key and click on the layer thumbnail for the word the, and then click on my, make sure I have my mask here for the hand drawn dot pattern. And as long as black is set to your foreground color, all you have to do is press alt option and delete to fill that selection with black. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with the word Pantones. This time I'm going to hold the command key and click on the layer thumbnail of the mask on this merged copy layer. Now when I do that, you'll see that there's a selection around the outside, which tells me that we actually need to inverse the selection so that we can knock it out of just the inner part of the letters. So once you have the selection active, come up to the select menu, choose inverse, and then click on your hand drawn dot pattern mask here for the folder. And once again, press alt option and delete. And you should now have something like this. Now what we can do from here is refine this. So I'm going to press B to get my brush tool and make sure that you have solid black as your foreground color. And I'm just gonna come in here and brush out a few of these dots that are kind of interfering with the readability of the song title. So I just wanna give that a little bit of breathing room by cleaning that up a bit. Okay, but you can go in and take out any of these dots that you want. And if you accidentally take one out that you like, all you have to do is press X to get white instead of black, and you can paint it right back in. Okay, so it's very easy using masks to kind of come back and remove things or paint things back in. So what I'm going to do at this point is select this bottom brush strokes group folder, hold the shift key and select the RGB yourself text and then press command G to put all of these into a group folder that we are now going to just call the Pantones. So now that we've created this first kind of band here, we've applied some nice and interesting looking text effects. Let's go ahead and add a few design elements here as we go. So I'm now going to select this Inky Doodle Lightning from the Freebies folder, open it up in Photoshop here, and then click and drag it into my file. Now I'm going to double click on the layer and change the name. Then I'm just going to move this up here, kind of maybe around the date I'm thinking would look pretty nice. And I'm just going to rotate it a little bit so that the point is kind of pointing directly here to the word Sunday. And then I'm going to press Command T, hold the Shift key and kind of scale it down a bit and play with the rotation until I get something like this, and then press Command J to duplicate it, Command T to do a free transform. I'm just going to drag this over here to the opposite side and maybe rotate it so it kind of points up like that. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more room on the left side, something like that. And now what I can do is select the first copy here on the bottom, hold Shift and select the second copy above, and then press Command G to put it into a group folder that we're just going to call lightning and then double click on the group folder to bring up the layer style dialog box and check off the color overlay option here. And we're going to go ahead and change the fill color to the hex value 954642 so that it kind of matches our red from above. So the next thing we're going to do is come back over to our freebie folder and I'm going to open up maybe color splash one stroke three in Adobe Illustrator select it, copy it, come back over to Photoshop and paste it as a smart object. And then let's maybe
play around with the rotation a little bit here. So I'm just going to rotate it, hold down the shift key and scale it up a bit like that. And then press return to apply the changes, then command J to make a copy of it, command T to do a free transform. I'm just going to stretch it over here to the left a bit to make it longer. Maybe rotate it a little bit more, hold shift and just move it up. Let's go ahead and make maybe one more copy of it. And then just play around with the, the size here to kind of fill in some of these gaps in the middle. Okay. Now let's maybe add one more of these on top. The next one I'm going to open here is Color Splash 2 Stroke 2. Okay, press Command A to select it, Command C to copy. Then I'm just going to close these tabs here, come back over to Photoshop, press Command V to paste it as a smart object. And then we can once again kind of play around with the size and positioning of this shape. I'm just going to move it over here, maybe flip it vertically. So I'm going to hold the Control key, click on the shape, and choose Flip Vertical. And that way I can just kind of extend this a bit so we have a smoother cap on the end here. And then press Return once you're happy with the size and positioning of your shapes. Now from here, hold the Shift key and select the bottom of these four shapes. Press Command G to put them into a group folder. And I'm just going to change the name of this one to brush strokes before double clicking on it to bring up my layer styles. Now this time for the fill color, let's go ahead and enter a hex value of 35374C on the keyboard. Okay, and now we've been able to kind of fill that as one solid shape. So it's a little bit easier to see now than the yellow. So if you wanted to go back in and maybe modify some of these a little bit more, this would be the time to do it. All right, so I'm just going to extend that a little bit just to fill in the middle here a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm just going to collapse that folder, create a new layer, press T on the keyboard to get my type tool, and then I'm going to click over here to the left side of the brush stroke and type out the word pixel pushers. And then I'm going to highlight the text, come up here to the size and scale it up a bit. And for the font, we're actually going to continue using a font called Long Haired Freaky People. I'm just going to move this over, press Command T to rotate it. And now I'm going to hold the Shift key and scale it up from the upper right corner of the bounding box until it's about that size and spans across the most of the brush stroke. Now I'm going to double click on this layer, check off the color overlay option, and change this color to 4D, let's see, 4D93. A7, which is this nice kind of pale blue color, all right? But it provides us with a nice amount of contrast on that dark purple background. Open up the Pantones folder, and I'm gonna select the RGB Yourself text layer and press Command G to copy it, and then press Command in the right bracket to move it up just below the Pixel Pushers text. Now I can press Command T, and I can just slide this over here so it's down and to the left of the Pixel Pushers text. Now let's just go ahead and grab our type tool and highlight the RGB yourself inside of the quotes. And maybe let's change this to saving it down. All right, that'll be our other hit song here for the pixel pushers. And then press Command J to duplicate it, Command Left to move the layer down, then Command T to do a free transform. And now you can slide it over here to the right side, press Return, press T to get your type tool, and now click and highlight this text and let's type in high hi dash res love. High res love and saving it down. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this whole design theme here. Okay, so now what we want to do is come back to our freebie folder and I'm going to open up this Inky Doodle Plus graphic right here. Pop that open in Photoshop, bring it into my document, press Command T, move it over here. Hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and maybe drag in a little bit from the top right corner or any of the corners of the bounding box to scale it down. And now what I can do is double click on the layer, check off the color overlay option, and let's just go ahead and make this maybe our yellowish orange color. So let's type in C19614 and hit Enter. Okay, so we've now colored in this plus symbol and maybe make it just a touch smaller between these two songs. Okay, so we're now gonna add a few more elements here. I'm gonna select Note 1 and Note 4 and pop these open in Photoshop as well. I'll grab each of these, drag and drop them into our document. 
So we can add these little musical notes here, just as like a little bonus. All right, so this will be note four, and this is note one. Now I'm just gonna reposition these slightly, so I'm gonna move this one over here, press Command T, hold Alt Option and Shift, and drag inwards a little bit to scale it down. And let's go ahead and rotate it a bit as well. Then we'll select Note 4, press Command T to apply a free transform, rotate it, scale it down by holding Alt Option and Shift and dragging inwards, and then move it on over to the lower right hand corner. So that just kind of balances us out a little bit. Double click on the first Note 4, check off the color overlay option. And now with my color picker here, I can actually just pick this red color from my document so I don't have to manually type in that value and then just hit OK. And now what I can do is hold the control key and click on this little effects icon here, choose copy layer styles, then select note one, hold down control and click on the layer and choose paste layer style. And that's going to apply the exact same layer style to that note that I'm using over here on the right. So at this point, you know, we have our next kind of strip set up here, but you guys can go in and maybe, you know, modify some of these if you want to, if you want to, you know, add shapes to it or, you know, modify the actual shapes themselves, you know, feel totally free to go in there and mix it up however you like. Okay, but when you're happy with it, select the brush strokes on the bottom, hold the shift key and select the pixel pushers text. So you've got all these layers and folders selected at the same time and then press Command G to put them into a folder, double click on the group one text, and just rename this Pixel Pushers. All right, and I'm just holding the Shift key and tapping that up a bit until everything looks pretty good. Now for the placement here, I'm thinking I might wanna move the plus a little bit closer and maybe type, maybe tap over the second song here, just so that I can make it a little bit more left justified with our type. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab this whole folder and move it down here below the Pantones. Next thing we're gonna do is come back over here to our freebies and I'm going to open Color Splash 1 Stroke 4 in Illustrator. Once that's open, press Command A to select it, Command C to copy it, and then Command and Tab to come back over to Photoshop where we can press Command V and paste this as a smart object. All right, so once that's pasted in, we're going to find a nice position for this. So I'm gonna move it down Maybe rotate it a bit, hold the shift key and drag outwards from the any of the four corners just to scale that up. And then once I'm happy with that, I can press return to apply the changes, command J to duplicate it, press command T to apply a free transform, and then hold the control key and click on the shape and choose flip horizontal, hold control and click again and choose flip vertical all the way at the bottom. And now we can move this over. So again, we kind of created this mirror image for our brush strokes and then hold the shift key and select both of those together. Press command T, scale them up a bit, like so, and then press return once you're happy with the size and the placement. Now I'm going to open up Color Splash 2 Stroke 4 in Illustrator. Grab it and select the whole thing. Press command C to copy it. Back over to Photoshop, command V to paste it as a smart object. And I'm going to do the same thing here by just playing around with the size and the positioning of this stroke. And then I'll go ahead and create another copy, Command J. Maybe move this one over here towards the left. And let's go ahead and create one more copy and maybe move this one down a little bit and scale it up somewhere about there. It looks pretty good. And then press Return. Select this top shape, hold Shift, and select the bottom brush stroke shape and then press Command G to put this into a group folder. Double click on group one text and just rename this group folder brush strokes. And now double click on the folder so that we can apply a color overlay. And now we can change the color of this whole box to let's say 4D 93 A7. All right, so now we've applied this color to our whole group folder here. And now we can kind of play around if we want to with the size and positioning of some of these strokes. If you just want to tweak it a little bit more, that's totally fine. Okay, maybe you want to select them all and make them a little bit taller. Just hold the control key and drag that bottom handle down. And you can rotate the shapes a bit as well. Okay, and once you've done that, press return to apply the changes. 
Let's come back over to our freebie folder to add some more hand-drawn elements. Okay, so I'm now going to select hand-drawn pattern 41-1, bring that open in Photoshop. And let's just go ahead and click and drag that in here. Rename the layer, press Command-T to do a free transform. Now I'm just going to hold the Shift key and scale it down a bit like so, and then maybe rotate it a bit as well, and then press Command-J to create a copy, Command-T, and then you can just slide it over here towards the right a bit. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And now I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select both of these shapes, press Command-G to put them into a group folder, and I'll just call this hand-drawn stripes, and then double-click on the folder to bring up my layer styles once again. Check off the color overlay box, and this time let's enter a value, a hex value of 235166, and then hit OK. So it's now got this dark blue on top of the light blue, which looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer, grab my type tool, click, and I'm just going to type out the name Vinny. All right, and then what I wanna do is press Command A to select all, and I'm going to change the font back to long-haired freaky people, and then press Command T to do a free transform. Hold the Shift key and drag outwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box to make it larger. And now I'm just going to move it up and maybe rotate it counterclockwise a bit so that it roughly kind of follows the angles of the other shapes and text. Okay, somewhere about there looks pretty good. Go ahead and press Return. Now what I wanna do is double click on the layer to change the color. So check off Color Overlay. And we wanna leave this copy set to this darker blue. So go ahead and hit OK. Now what we're gonna do is press Command J to make a copy, tap the up arrow a few times and tap it to the left a few times as well, and then go ahead and double click on the layer again to bring up your color overlay option. And this time we're going to sample some of this nice kind of orange color from the paint strokes of the Pantone strip that we created earlier. Go ahead and hit OK twice to apply the changes and close out of the dialog box. And now we can select the top copy hold shift and select the copy below, and now press command J to duplicate both of those layers, and then press command and the left bracket twice to move both of those layers below the first two. Now press command T to do a free transform, and I'm just gonna move both of these layers down about here. So at this point, what I wanna do is actually change the type, so I'm gonna grab my text tool and change this word to vectors, press command A to select all, command C to copy it, and then turn the visibility of this layer off for a moment and select the type layer below. Press T to get your type tool. Click inside here three times to highlight the text and then just press Command V to paste it. And now when I turn the visibility of that layer above back on, we'll see that we have both of these layers updated. So now I'm just gonna hold the Shift key and tap this over to the right just so I can create kind of a nice offset there. And then let's just go ahead and create another new layer get your type tool once again, and click somewhere next to the word Vinny, and type out the word and. Now I'm gonna press Command A to select all. Click up here on the top where it says the name of my font, currently set to long-haired freaky people. And let's just go ahead and change it back to lovely quotes regular. Now I wanna make this a bit larger, so again, I'm gonna move my cursor over this T here on the top toolbar, and I'm just gonna click and drag it to the right to make it a little bit larger to maybe you know, move it over a bit and rotate it slightly. And then I'll double click on the layer to bring up my color overlay option. Check the box off there. And I'm just going to enter the value E7, E7, E7. Hit OK twice to apply the changes and then press Command J and Command Left to duplicate the layer and move it down below the previous layer. Grab my type tool and click inside here and type out the word the, all in lowercase and then just move it down a bit to reposition that text. So now it reads Vinny and the vectors, right? And all I'm gonna do is grab both of those layers and maybe scale them up a bit and slide it over to the left. Okay, and now I can grab my top layer, hold shift and select my bottom text layer. And now I can just kind of move these over so they're a little more in the center, maybe somewhere about there looks pretty good. And go ahead and press return. Okay, now while I still have all these layers selected, I can hold the Command key and click on the Hand Drawn Stripes group folder and the Brush Strokes folder. So I've got all of these selected together. Press Command G to create a new group folder. Click twice in here to change the name 
and call it Finny and the vectors, right? And then Command and the left bracket just to move it down below the Pixel Pushers group folder. So again, I might come in here just for a second to modify some of these brush strokes because I think it's a little bit wider than I need it to be. So I'm just going to select all of those, hold down the Alt Option and Shift key, and just do a free transform and move the handle on the left or the right inwards a bit. So by holding the Alt Option key as I do this, I'm moving it in from both sides as opposed to just one at a time. All right, so I just wanted that to be a little more snug against our text there, and that's looking pretty good. Create another new layer, press the space bar so I can get this hand tool and just move it down a little bit so I can see the space in the bottom. Press T on the keyboard, and then I'm gonna type out the word admissions, press Command A to select all, come back up here and change the font once again to DK Aventura regular, and press Command T to do a free transform. Hold Alt Option and Shift and scale it down a bit by dragging inwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box. Then go ahead and rotate it slightly as well. And I'm just going to move this over here a little bit to the right and then press Command J to duplicate the layer. Command in the left bracket to move it down. And then just hold the Shift key and tap this down a few times. Okay, and then I'm going to click here to change my text. And I'm going to call this or type in the word prices. All right, and then hold the shift key and tap this over a bit so that your text is roughly right justified. Now what I can do is hold the shift key and select the admissions text, press command G to put it into a new group folder. And let's just go ahead and call this admissions prices. Hold down the control key and click on the effects icon next to the lightning folder. Choose Copy Layer Styles, select the Admission Prices group folder, hold the Control key and click again, and now choose Paste Layer Styles, and that's going to make it so that it matches the same red that we've been using for some of these other elements throughout. Let's go ahead and create another new layer. Press T on the keyboard to get your Type tool, and this time let's go ahead and type out some pricing. So the first thing I'm going to do here is type out $10 in advance, and now I'm going to press Command A to select all, Maybe just make this a bit smaller because we don't want to we don't want it to stand out as much as our admissions prices. And what I'm going to do is basically just press Command T to rotate this so that it matches the angle of our admissions prices text. And then just slide it over a bit. Press Return to apply the changes. Command J to copy it, and then Command in the left bracket to move it down. And then hold the Shift key and tap it down a few times. And let's just go ahead and change this now to twelve dollars for a day of show. Okay, and now I'm just going to hold the shift key and tap that over so that these vertical lines line up and our text is looking pretty good. And then let's just go ahead and create one more copy, press Command J. And now what I want to do with this one is grab my type tool, click inside and just type out an uppercase I, and then press Command T to do a free transform, move your cursor over the bottom, and then just basically kind of stretch it out a bit to create this elongated you know, line which will basically serve as a divider. All right, so we're gonna place that in between the admission prices text and the actual prices. All right, once you've done that, click on the first piece of text here, hold shift and select the third, then press command G to put it into a group folder, and we're going to call this pricing, and then double click on the group folder, check off the color overlay option, and then for the fill color, we're gonna sample some of this nice grayish purple from here, and then hit OK to apply the changes. Now I want to add another little element here just to add some embellishments. So I'm going to come back to the freebie folder and open up the crown one PNG file. Pop that open in Photoshop. Drag it on over here into my document. And now I'm going to place this inside of the admissions prices group folder because I want it to have that same color. Then press Command T to do a free transform. Hold Shift and drag inwards from any of the four corners to scale it down and then just rotate it a bit and place it over here to the right side just to kind of balance things out a bit. Okay, so now I can collapse that folder, hold the shift key and select admissions prices and the pricing group folders together, and I'm just gonna tap them over a bit towards the middle. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is select my Live from the PS Dome group folder all the way on the top, click the arrow to reveal the contents, 
grab the stroke that's inside and press Command J to duplicate it, and then press Command and the right bracket to move it up until it's outside above all of the other folders. Now I'm going to press the spacebar to get my hand and just kind of move it up here. Press Command T to do a free transform, and then I can basically grab this copy and move it down here towards the bottom. Now I'm going to hold Alt, Option, and Shift and scale it down a bit, move my cursor over the bottom part of the bounding box here, the bottom handle, and just squish this to make it smaller and thinner. And then I'm going to hold the Control key and click on the shape and choose Flip Horizontal. So again, like I was saying earlier, by kind of flipping these things and transforming them and manipulating them, it kind of mixes things up a bit so they don't all look exactly the same. So press Command J to make a copy of it, Command T to, pro to apply a free transform, then hold Control and click again and choose Flip Horizontal. And now I can just kind of rotate it a bit so that it looks more uniform on both sides. Press Command T, hold Control and click again and choose Flip Vertical. And then just kind of, you know, play around with the positioning or the rotation a little bit until you get something that you like. Now what I can do is hold shift and select both of these and I'm going to actually drag them into the pricing folder so that it automatically applies that same color. All right, and maybe press command T to do a free transform and modify these just a little bit more to maybe thin it out and rotate it a bit just so it looks a little more random. Okay, and that's looking pretty good add another new text layer, come down here and type out the words brought to you by in all uppercase, and you can use the same font, DK Avantur, press Command A to select all, and then I'm just going to drag the size to the left to make it a little bit smaller. And now up here you also have this fill color box which is currently set to black, so I'm just going to click inside of there and I'm going to sample some of this red color. All right, and then press Command T to do a free transform, just rotate this slightly and move it over here. And you know what? Actually, let's go ahead and change that color back. Instead of the red, let's use this purple gray color. And now press Command J and then Command in the left bracket to move it down. Hold the Shift key and tap it down a few times. Click three times inside, and now we'll type out Design Cuts and Eric Vasquez. All right, now click three times inside. Let's go ahead and change the font here back to long-haired freaky people, just so we can kind of mix it up. All right, now I'm gonna make it a little bit larger, click on the fill color, and now I can use that red color for that part. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold the shift key and tap the right arrow until I get these things about left aligned, so it looks pretty good like that. And now I'm going to press Command G while both of these layers are selected, and put it in a new group folder, and I'll just type out brought to you by, so I know what it is. All right, and I'm gonna press Command and the left bracket a few times just to move this down so I can reorder some of these folders. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a few more design elements here and embellishments just to really push this a little bit further. So I'm gonna select the Lightning Group folder, press Command J to duplicate it, and then Command and the left bracket to move it down. And I'm gonna move this down here just above the brought to you by group folder and press Command T to do a free transform and then hold the space bar to get your hand so you can navigate around the document. Hold down the shift key and drag this down all the way down here towards the bottom and then press return. Now I can click on this arrow to reveal the contents of the folder and show me both of these lightning bolts. And then I'll select the first one and press command T to do a free transform. And I'm basically just going to reposition it here so that it points more towards my name. Press return and I'll grab the other one and I'm gonna do the same thing. Press Command T to do a free transform, and then just move it over here to the left of the word design. And you can maybe you know move it up or down a little bit too, just to add a little more variation there. All right, so something like that looks pretty good. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and go back to our freebie folder, and I'm gonna open up the hand-drawn pattern 49-01. All right, so this is like a bunch of X's here, looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna drag that over into my document close out of that, and I'm just gonna click in here to change the file name, and then press Command T to do a free transform, and I'm gonna move this pretty much all the way up here into the upper left-hand corner. Press Command T and rotate it, and then hold Alt, Option, and Shift and drag inwards to scale it down a little bit. I'm just gonna move it maybe somewhere around here, looks pretty good, make it a little smaller as well. Okay, and now what I can do is press Return to apply the changes, Command J to make another copy, I'm going to move this copy down here, somewhere in the middle. 
maybe just behind our Vinny and the Vectors strip here. And then press Command J to make one more copy. Command T to apply a free transform. And this time I'll move this copy all the way down here into the lower left hand corner. And press Return to apply the changes. Now I can hold the Shift key and select at the bottom so that I've got all three of these selected together. Press Command G to put them into a group folder. And then I'm just going to rename the folder X pattern and press the number three on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 30%. Now, I don't want this pattern to go spilling outside of the paper, so I'm gonna to have to apply a mask like we did earlier on. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the background folder, and I can actually move this entire X pattern folder to the top level of the background folder. And what I can do now is hold the command key, click on the layer mask thumbnail for the adjustment layers group folder inside the background folder, and then while I still have the X pattern folder selected, click on the add layer mask icon. And now that will make it so the X's are only visible inside of the paper. So what I can do now is select my very top folder here, live from the PS Dome, and I'm gonna add an adjustment layer to the overall design. So come down here and click on the adjustment layer icon and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Move the saturation slider up to about 20%. So that's just gonna boost the saturation overall a little bit and push the colors a little further just to make them more vibrant throughout. Okay, and now you can kind of come in here and maybe tweak some of the spacing of these elements and you can select multiple folders just by holding the command key and clicking on each one. All right, so I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit just to give myself a little bit more room here and some breathing room to all of these elements. All right, something like that's looking pretty good. And now we'll just add a few last textures as a finishing touch. So first one I'm gonna open is Photocopy 30. I'm gonna pop that open in Photoshop. Press Command A to select all, then Command C to copy it. And then I will just close out of this tab. Make sure that you are at the very top of your layers palette, just below the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer and press Command V to paste it. Now what I can do is press Command T to do a free transform. Hold the Alt option and Shift keys and drag inwards to scale it down. And I'm going to reposition it so it can be a little bit larger than your document if you want. And then press Return. Now I'm going to press the number 6 on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 60% and change the blending mode of that layer to screen. Then I'm just going to double click on the layer to rename it. And then I'll come back over to my freebies folder to grab the next texture. So the next one that I'm going to grab is 34. Open that up in Photoshop. And we're gonna do the same thing. Press Command A to select all, Command C to copy it. And now we can press Command W to close out of the tab. And then Command V to paste this layer on top. Press Command T to do another free transform. Hold down Alt Option and Shift and just drag inwards to scale it down a bit. And if you need to scale it back up, hold Alt Option Shift and drag out from any of the four corners. And then press Return to apply the changes. Press the number three to reduce the opacity to 30%. And go ahead and change the blending mode from normal to multiply. Now we're going to grab Photocopy 36 and just continue kind of layering these textures on top. So press Command A, select all, Command C to copy, Command W to close, and then back over here in your document, press Command V to paste it. So I forgot to go ahead and just rename this last layer, and then I'll rename this layer as well while I'm at it. Might as well. We got a good thing going. All right, so that's 36. And then for this one, press Command T to do a free transform. Scale it down a bit. And this time, let's make the blending mode soft light. And we'll set it to about 30%. So change it to soft light and press the number three on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 30%. And let's just go ahead and open our last photocopy texture, photocopy 51. I'm just gonna copy the name Open it in Photoshop, press Command A to select all, Command C to copy it, Command W to close the tab, and then Command and V on the keyboard to paste it. Command T to do a free transform. I'm just gonna scale it down a bit and move it on top right here. And then let's just go ahead and click to rename the layer. And for this one, I'm gonna change the blending mode to multiply, press the number two on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 20%. Maybe just play around with the positioning a little bit more until you find something that you're happy with. There we go. And then press return. And now what I can do is select the top photocopy texture, hold the shift key and select the first one that we brought in. 
press Command G to put them into a group folder, double click on the name, and I'm just going to call this Photocopy Textures. And again, I want to make it so that these textures are only visible within the paper. So like we did before, click the arrow on the background folder to reveal the contents, hold the Command key, and then go ahead and click on the Layer Mask thumbnail for the X pattern mask. And now with your Photocopy Textures group folder still selected in the Layers palette, come down here to the bottom and click on the Add Layer Mask icon. And now we've finished our design-themed gig poster. So it's got this really cool vintage feel to it. It's got a lot of great handmade textures and elements going on. And it's just a lot of fun. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly had a blast making it because I love doing this kind of stuff. And again, I hope that you guys will go ahead and check out the full bundle because it really is a huge collection of some very unique and interesting patterns and textures that are really gonna help you step up your design game. So thank you guys so much for following along. This is Eric Fasquiz, and we'll see you guys next time.